Anna Rosier is the managing director of the firm Organics. Nicole Berberian is a nutritionist. Very good morning to you. Um, well, Anna, you produce organic food, but when you hear people say, well, actually, I am not sure about it, it's more expensive, I prefer to buy something that's free range rather than organic and something that's local, your heart must sink. Well, I think that's exactly the challenge that we're up against, and this is why we've launched the Why I Love Organic campaign. And what this is all about is really democratising organic, because it's often quite misunderstood. Um, so people have a perception of what um, they think organic is, and what this really is about is about them being able to discover what organic for them means. Mm. Nicole, there's some, sometimes people use various arguments for the reasons they don't eat organic food. Sometimes it's cost, which is a perennial argument. You know, other people sort of say, well, I don't really know if there's any difference, if it does me any good. Can you help us with Absolutely. what science tells us that, about that's this? That's a very good question. And first of all, I want to say organic has benefit environmentally, sustainability, that's where its plus point is. But when we look at health and we look at statistics, what's actually in it, where are the differences? Consumers need to know that so they can make the choice. They can make those choices about the cost. So if we look at each stage, you've got the safety levels. What are the safety aspects? The regulations for both organic and non are the same. If we look at pesticide residues and additives, organic actually has less residues but then we look at the, those residues, they're tiny trace amounts and they're within safe legal limits, not found to cause any problems. Nutrient content, that's the critical mm. one that everybody wants to know about. Is there any difference? Studies have looked at this time and time again. The latest review, 2009 and 2010, looked at the levels and actually found no significant differences in most of the nutrients. Yeah. Those that were different actually aren't ones that are going to have much impact on health as far as we know. Well, so, so Anna, if there isn't overwhelming evidence that from a nutritional point of view it's better to eat organic, why should people choose organic? Because I think there's other benefits, as Nicole already talked about, in terms of there's better animal welfare. There's also less pesticides, so if you are worried about pesticides, there's definitely less, less pesticides used. And um, there's also less additives that can be used, um, as well as obviously the impact on nature. So now you say less pesticides, but are pesticides still allowed in organic food? There are some that are permitted, um, and, but they're more natural pesticides. So they are classed as pesticides, but they're obviously more natural and they're, they're much, much limited. Okay. Is, is price the key element here? For example, if you, have, if you had, as you go to your supermarket, if you had your organic vegetables next to your regular vegetables and they were the same price, is it your belief that most people would just go organic because, I don't know, because something in them says, you know, I, I think that might be better. Is price the thing? I think price is a factor and um, we've just actually done a survey with Brandview who did a basket of 20 goods and on a weekly basis that would be um, under five pounds would be the difference in that basket of goods. So price is definitely a factor there but I think um, it's about people understanding why they buy organic. So just because it's the same price that's not you know, the reason that I think people want to buy. They want to buy because they're concerned about animal welfare or they're concerned about pesticides or they're concerned about the environment or they're concerned about great tasting food. Um, I just want to ask you um, uh, Nicole about this issue. I mean, food is a, you know, it's always of a concern to us, isn't it? And when we have a story that, like the one that emerged yesterday in the Daily Mail, picks it up uh, this morning, poison food in shops for three weeks. This is about the tainted uh, liquid egg. From a nutritional point of view, from, a, from somebody who knows a lot about food standards and safety, what is your view about uh, what consumers should be concerned about? As with everything, we've got good regulation in this country, which picks up any sort of toxic element like this and this is exactly what's happened in this case to give customers the reassurance that they know that things are being monitored in this case this was something that happened in Germany it was a production of a vegetable oil that went into a product which then goes again into other products so at each stage it's getting diluted down however it shouldn't be there which is why there's been action taken mm. to make sure that it's no longer on the consumer shelves it's not present and and the levels that were actually present would be low and you need to actually have this level repeated over a long period of time for you to get the, the health problems that we'd be concerned okay. about. Nicole, so. thanks very much indeed. Nutritionist Nicole Berberian and Anna Rosier from Organics. Thank you both for your time you. this morning.